Is of <coughs> your cooking, right? J. Marcus, can you stop making that noise? Stop that, okay? Every time. Well, okay, thank you, son. Love you. Thank you. Man, kids, man, do you have any? Anyway, do you enjoy cooking? And you can't help but take pictures of it to show it off. Well, today I'll be showing you my favorite way to shoot one of the most photographed things in social media. And of course, we're talking about food. Now, we're not talking about ordinary food photography here. We're talking about those dark and moody food photography. All right, but before we dive into it, we gotta make some food, right? So you're in luck. Not only that you'll learn food photography, but we're gonna cook you up some orange chicken. So you better stick around. I'm telling you, you do not wanna miss this. It's so damn good. Stay tuned, man. Bruh, you gotta stay tuned. Oh, so yeah, stay tuned out there, yo. Alright, we're gonna make this real quick because I know that you clicked on this video to learn food photography But man follow this recipe to the T and I assure you that you will not regret it because it is that good and By the end of this video, you won't have to say it because You're welcome now. Let's hear a little bit of music and let's get this started hit it hit it hit it Cut the chicken thigh fillet into one inch cubes or chicken breasts if you can't find chicken thigh fillets anywhere. Um, by cutting it this way, it gives you the best texture and it helps keep the moisture. So out of every bite, it will be crispy on the outside and juicy and tender on the inside. Now, I discovered orange chicken in a fast food restaurant called Panda Express. And this was back when I was living in California. Ever since then, it easily became one of my favorite fast foods. I've done my research on how to make this, and this is by far the best of the best. So I've done the research for you so you don't have to. Because I changed a couple of things in here and added my own twist. I made it my own orange chicken. Now that we're done with the batter uh, and mixing in the chicken, just chill it for 30 minutes. Now when you fry them, make sure to put them in batches and leave room for each other so that it's not overcrowded. Because if you don't do that, it's gonna start sticking to each other. Now let's make the sauce. This is where the magic happens, okay? So here you start off with the aromatics. So it immediately starts to smell so good that anyone around you will just start salivating for your orange chicken. When it comes to the orange juice, make sure that you use a freshly squeezed orange juice. And what I do that's a little different is, right there, you can smell that already. Okay, you zest half of the orange juice. Just follow the ingredients in order, all right? And you won't go wrong. So every time you cook this, it will be just as good as the last. And here, what you're looking for now is a consistency of the maple syrup. So once it starts to look like maple syrup, you know you're done. And then from then on, all you're doing is putting the rest of the chicken in to make sure that they're evenly coated with the sauce. All right, so this is what we're gonna work with right here. Uh, we're gonna be using this wall right here. I know you can see everything because right now I'm using wide lens. But by the time that we'll be shooting the, the food, it will be on an 85 millimeter. I like a lot of depth of field uh, in my photos. The lighting when it comes to food is different, okay? Portraiture and food photography, two different animals. 
when it comes to dark food photography, the light is coming from the back of the food. So you got the camera, the food, and then the light hitting it this way. I don't like it too much behind the food. I want to see a little bit of the side. So we're going to do it this way. We're going to point the light coming this way, hitting the food. Let's do that right now. And then we're going to take this and we're going to bring it down, bring it down. Now, part of the reason why people, you know, photographers, food photographers like hitting it from the back, hitting it from the back, that didn't sound well, but the light coming off from the back end is that when you shoot with the food here and the light here and the camera is there as well, hitting the front side of the food, the food turns out looking really flat, boring. So that's why this is what's best, for me at least. Now another thing, scrim. And in this case, we'll be using the scrim that's on here. This is my reflector and it comes with a scrim, which is kind of nice as soon as I get this thing off, right? This is what a scrim is. You see, it's like a see-through material, white. Now, if you don't have any of these, use a sheer white curtain. What you want to do is block the light with that and make it as close to the food as much as possible without the scrim getting inside the, the picture, just enough so that it's out of the frame. What it does is it broadens the light making the food photography much softer. The light will spread a lot more. As you can see in my face right now, right? You can see right now, it's much softer rather than this. This is harsh shadows, you can see that. But when you do it like this, it softens it. It darkens it a little bit, but we can adjust the shutter speed later down the line to compensate for the light. That's another thing, it's tripod, right? Now, when it comes to my food photography, dark food photography, I like low aperture, but at the same time, I don't want the food to be blurry on the sides. I want the food to be the focal point. So we're not going to go as low as 1.8 on my 85 millimeter. We're gonna probably use 2.2 or even more than that. So we'll be turning off this light. We won't be needing this light. All right, there. So here we go. We are now on my 85 millimeter. The orange chicken is right there torturing me. So right now, what you see here is the orange chicken being focused. That's the focal point of this dark food photography. I like the, uh, the wood. It, it's got this character to this table that I enjoy. So I wanted it to be seen. So I put a little reflector which is not really a reflector it's a it's a chair that I'm using to reflect some of the light back onto that table I think the garlic is a little too much in focus in the camera so let's move this behind right there maybe right there oh, it's out of the picture so let's move it back keep it close to the orange right here but that doesn't take away from the orange, right? What else can we do here to make it even darker? See, that those are my lights, and this is my scrim that I was talking about, right there, okay? And it's softening the light that goes through. But it's spilling so much over here. I don't like that, so we're gonna have to darken that up somehow. But here we're controlling light. That's what a photographer does. We're, we're controlling light. Throw in some books right here shutter speed slow it down 40 how does that look even more, one over 30 some wine how's that mm -hmm. that's even better right to kind of ooh, 
I like that red wine there. I want more shadows. So let's block some more of that light. Like this. Let's adjust it a little bit. I think it's way too high. Let's do this right here. Ah, that wine is too bright. So let's turn it so that it, we don't see too much of the label. And there you go. Okay, let's focus back on the, uh, the orange chicken. And there you go. Let's shoot away. All right, now we are loading this onto uh, Photoshop. And what I have here are two of the pictures that we shot and one of them is at 150 and then the other one is 130 just to make sure that we have the best of both worlds because we'll be merging the pictures together and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute what I did was take the orange chicken from this other picture copy and paste it onto this other picture and that gives you a nice brightness to the orange chicken the ginger is a little too green for my taste it's a little too much I think it's taking away uh, some of the uh, attention from the orange chicken so what we're gonna do is mute that color just a tad and darken it a little bit so that's exactly what I did I adjusted the the hue um, so it's not as green and then I lowered down the brightness and makes it look like this there you go now also the tabletop is a little too colorful for me so again I did exactly the same thing so that it's a little bit on the monotone side mon monotone side <laughs> and then there you go you see the orange chicken is starting to pop out even more and now a little bit more about the chicken what I noticed is that it's a little too green now this is orange chicken. It only makes sense if the chicken has an orange tint. So I added a little bit orange tint to it to make it look more orange chickenly. Okay, invented a new word there. <laughs> and that's how it looks right there. Now it's all about just the surrounding areas. Okay, so I want it to be a little bit darker. What I did was vignette. Okay, so I vignetted the surroundings and then this is what it looks like so now it's looking more and more like dark food photography the next thing is all the finishing touches the text this this blue line here i chose a color that is a good contrast to the orange chicken if you look at the uh, color spectrum wheel the opposite color of this orange uh, color or hue this is the exact contrast to that which is blue that makes it even more interesting uh, to look at and the finishing touch is well since I made this my own version of orange chicken why don't we call it Jovin's orange chicken and just like that what we have here is a text that's uh, a good contrast to the food which is the focal point making the finishing touches more delicious and here is the finished product it's really that simple man that's a two-in-one video dude you know i deserve one of these because like i just hooked you up right make sure to subscribe Find to this channel, channel and hit, hit that the bell for notifications of my upcoming videos and i really hope to see you in the next until then thank you and much love too far <laughs> I, I got you too that's as far as it goes i sorry man just it's not working i'll just do this